Hey everyone, Thomas from MasteringExplained.com here. Today we're going to talk about something called loudness bias. It's a very important concept in mastering and actually in uh, audio engineering in general. And this is something that stops us from creating the perfect sound unless we have some strategies for managing it. And it affects everyone, whether you're a beginner or a professional. And in this video, I will talk about what loudness bias is and why it is important. And I will give you some common scenarios when it is affecting you and some strategies that you can use to deal with it. I would love to have known about this when I was starting out with audio engineering. It would have saved me lots of frustration. And this is one of the core concepts in mastering. So make sure that you know about this if you want to be ahead of the game. So let's go. So let's start by listening to an example. So put on your headphones or listen in good speakers for the full effect of this. You will hear two different versions of a mix and I want you to decide which one of them that you prefer. Which one of them do you like the sound of the most, okay? Okay, so which one of them did you prefer? If you are like most people, then you probably liked alternative A better. It probably sounded more uh, present, had a fuller low end, maybe sparkled a bit more. Maybe it was a bit wider and maybe a bit more embracing. And you might have figured out already what's going on. And the thing is, the only difference between A and B is the level. A is 2 dB louder than B. But apart from that, there's no difference whatsoever. But why did A sound better? And the reason for this is called loudness bias. Because all things equal, we humans simply prefer stuff that sound louder. That's how we are wired. And why is that? Well, it turns out that our hearing is a bit strange. Our ears are, for example, less sensitive to low end at lower levels, so when something is quieter, our ears will hear less bass. So if we hear the same material at different loudness levels, we will perceive the louder version as being fuller and the quieter version as being thinner. And to some extent this also applies to the high end. Quieter stuff will sound slightly darker and louder stuff will sound brighter. And the thing to Google to dive deeper into this is Fletcher Munson or Equal Loudness Contour. And if you are working within the audio engineering field, you have probably heard about this before. And we also associate loudness with distance. So louder sound tend to be perceived as closer and quieter sounds uh, are further away. So that's why alternative A sounded thicker and brighter and more present. And these qualities tend to be the things that we like, unless it gets too loud or too boomy or too bright and so on. But within reason we like the slightly louder version. So loudness bias is a real thing, it's built into our human perception of the world and everyone is affected. I am affected, you are affected, any top engineer in the world is affected. And you cannot trust your ears to compare stuff when there are differences in loudness. You need strategies to avoid the common pitfalls. And I will get to the strategies in a moment, but first I want to show you some common scenarios. Look at this plugin, for example. It's that legendary Pultec equalizer. And it looks really analog and nice. It has tubes, or virtual tubes at least. And it makes everything sound better without even doing anything. Except for adding 1 dB of gain, of course. Because yes, the default preset adds 1 dB of gain. And here's a nice legendary tape recorder. And it has real tape 
or virtual tape at least, and it adds nice warmth and character right out of the box. And it also adds half a dB of gain. And these are what I call sneaky plugins. They seem to improve things by just being enabled, even at factory settings, and they might actually improve things, but there's no way of knowing unless you remove that loudness bias before comparing. And we can create this situation by ourselves as well. Let's say that you are using an equalizer and you are EQing using nothing but boosts because that's what you like. And what happens when you disable the equalizer? Well, the level drops, it gets quieter and it gets thinner and duller. Now, when you enable the equalizer again, you will hear both the effect of the equalization and the effect of the increased loudness. It will sound more present, fuller and brighter by that loudness increase alone. So there's no way to know if the EQ is good because there is loudness bias involved as well. Here's a compressor. It's reducing the level, so you will add some makeup gain. And in fact, you happen to be into that concept of gain staging. You add a bit of level here and there in the chain instead of everything at the end. So every plugin or unit in your chain has a bit of gain and you build up that huge sound dB by dB. And funnily enough, every step in the chain makes everything sound better. If you bypass any unit or any plugin, everything will sound smaller. And if you enable it again, you will get that huge professional sound back. And this is loudness bias in full action. All of these examples are situations where loudness bias will stop you from making informed decisions. There might be valid reasons, of course, for adding gain in a plugin or an analog unit. Maybe that's what's needed to get into the sweet spot for great sound for that particular unit. And that's okay, of course. You just need some way to deal with the loudness bias. Because the bypass button alone will no longer give you any answers. Okay? You need some strategies and methods. Okay, so I will talk about three strategies to use here. And those are use unity gain whenever possible, use loudness matching, and the third one is bypass gets the advantage. I will explain all of them. So let's talk about the first one. Use unity gain whenever possible. And this is like, it's like a micro habit that keeps you from fooling yourself when you are working. Whenever you add a plugin or a processor to the chain, try to keep it at unity gain as far as possible. And what does that mean exactly? Well, for example, that Pultec plugin, if there's an obvious difference in sound when you enable the plugin, which there is in this plugin, then you can start by adjusting the output gain until on and bypass sound the same. That's the starting point with unity gain. Then after you have done some tweaks, try to readjust the output gain again so that the apparent loudness stays the same when you switch between on and off. And the same goes for that equalizer where you only did boosts. Find a way to adjust the output level to get the same loudness as when bypassed. Then you will be able to hear what you are actually doing within the EQ. And if you are using some sort of gain staging, get to know the plugins or hardware units that you are using, because not all of them will sound better or will even sound different at all when you push them, because you might get fooled by the loudness bias when you are increasing the gain. That is always a possibility to look out for. And some analog gear have huge, clean, linear headroom, and they have low noise floor, and such processors will, they will not give you anything back when you push it other than that you lose the ability to bypass it without messing up your gain staging. And some processors will actually sound worse when you push them, but that fact might be hidden by the loudness bias, because it gets louder and worse, so you will tend to, tend to prefer it anyway. So try to keep as many plugins and processors as possible at unity gain, 
and be very deliberate about where and when you bump the level within the chain. Most plugins have a clean output gain that you can set in order to get unity gain without losing that magic that happens within the plugin. And you might notice that the sound gets worse when you lower the level, but that's just the loudness bias talking. So be your best friend and don't fool yourself in this regards, okay? Okay, so the next strategy, use loudness matching. And this ties in with the first strategy because that's really what you're doing when you are adjusting for unity gain. But loudness matching also applies to the processing chain as, uh, as a whole. And um, this is especially important when you are using peak limiters, for example, with lots of gain or when you are bumping the level somewhere in your chain because you use gain staging of some kind. Some one of the units might be pushed and you get some additional gain there. And sometimes we work with small adjustments and uh, several of them that adds up to a bigger difference. And when you master, you usually have an original mix and you have the mastered version and you want to be able to hear that before and after at the same loudness so that you know that you are doing the right thing and if you don't match the loudness you will tend to prefer the louder version as we have talked about and that usually is the master so you will need to match the loudness of the before and after in order to make that decision and the concept of loudness matching is it's so important and it's a big area, it's vast, that we have decided to make a separate video about that and you will find the link to it here above and in the description as well whenever that video is released, it's not released yet. So the third strategy I call bypass gets the advantage and that's the ultimate trick to stop fooling yourself and it's simple. Whenever you're in doubt, you make sure that the bypassed version is slightly louder. You make the loudness bias work in favor of the unprocessed version. Not by much, maybe half a dB or one dB or so, but enough to force the processed version to actually be better. So for example, when you are using a compressor on a full mix, you often need less than half a dB or maybe one dB of gain reduction to get that gluing effect or whatever you are aiming for. The trick here is to not use the makeup gain, leave it at zero, because now when you bypass the compressor, the bypassed version will be slightly louder. But if the compression really is needed, then the compressed version will still sound better, despite being slightly quieter. And if the makeup gain is needed in order to make the compressed version sound better, that's a loudness bias warning sign. Tread carefully, okay? Okay, so that's a lot of information, but the major points in this video are these. You can't make a fair comparison between two sounds if they have different loudness, okay? You tend to prefer the louder version, all else being equal. This is called loudness bias, and it's a human trait. If you don't take this loudness bias into account, you cannot trust your ears, no matter how experienced you are. You can deal with this by keeping your plugins or other processors, analog or digital, at unity gain whenever possible. You can also use loudness matching whenever you are comparing different sounds, and you can also trick yourself by giving the loudness advantage to the unprocessed version whenever you are in doubt. Do you have any more tips on how to deal with loudness bias? What are your tricks and what are your strategies? Let us know in the comments. Also hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from us. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.